In 2003, the United States Library of Congress purchased this 1507 map of the world from a German prince for $10 million. Adjusted for inflation, $14.7 million. It was and remains as the most expensive map ever sold. The reason was simple. It was the first map to show the words America. And it's the reason the Americas are named what they are. And centuries later, the map spire, the United States of America formed, which obviously adopted the name America as part of its full name. In this video, I'll tell the interesting story of this map and how it named the New World. And we'll take a closer look at its features as well as several other old maps of the period. The map was published in 1507 alongside a 103 page book in Latin titled Cosmographia Introductio or in English, Introduction to Cosmography, by Martin Walsemuller and Matthias Ringman, though they used different pen names at the time. Walsemuller is typically credited with the map, and Ringman, the writing of the book. The Introduction to Cosmography, which is thought to have had a thousand copies printed, faded into obscurity, but they resurfaced in the 18th and 19th century, though none of them had a map. This book described what was visible of the cosmos in 1507 which of course included what was known about the geography of the Earth. It included climate zones, the shape of the Earth, winds, and habitable regions. This wasn't much different than other textbooks of the period. But after the authors described what was known to Europeans about Africa, Asia, and of course Europe, the authors described a new part of the world, which had no settled name. So they made an argument for what they thought it should be named. These parts have in fact now been more extensively explored and a fourth part has been discovered by Amerigo Vespucci, as will be set forth in what follows. Since both Asia and Africa received their names from women, I see no reason why anyone should justly object to calling this part Amerige, or the land of Amerigo, or America, after Amerigo, is discoverer, a man of great ability. But wasn't it Christopher Columbus that discovered this fourth part of the world? Few have doubted that Christopher Columbus made contact with this new world before the Italian explorer Amerigo Vespucci. This occurred in 1492, but Columbus didn't set foot on the mainland until his third of four voyages, in 1498, on what is today the coast of Venezuela. Before this, he had only visited the islands of the Caribbean. In a letter written by Vespucci to a Florentine official, Vespucci claimed to have found the fourth part of the world in 1497 while exploring on behalf of Spain. This would put him ahead of Columbus, as well as a few weeks ahead of John Cabot, an Italian explorer sailing on behalf of the English. The letter, dated 1504, was published the following year, and a copy eventually found its way to saint Die, a small French town where the authors were members of a group of scholars called the Gymnasium. But this letter is possibly a fake. It's the only document from the period that ever refers to this voyage, as well as the only one of a handful of letters attributed to Vespucci to ever mention it. Nevertheless, the authors put the letter in the book and believed it as proof that Vespucci found the New World before Columbus. It wasn't long after the publishing that the debate over the validity of the letter began. 16th century historian Bartolome de las Casas suspected that the letter was real, but that Vespucci incorporated observations from a later voyage in order to strip Columbus of his title as the first European explorer to find the mainland. Along with this letter, the group probably obtained Portuguese marine charts. But before we take a look at these maps, first I want to share with you today's sponsor, Speakly. Speakly, in my opinion, may be the best language learning app created. I just started using it, but the methodology is clear. They teach words and sentences based on their relevance in real life situations. This means that you don't learn anything that you actually can't use to speak the language. Everything is bare to the bones essential and actually helps you start speaking the language much faster. Based on research, this methodology helps you learn languages five times faster compared to what most are accustomed to, which means you could go from zero to solid speaking skills in around three to four months. This requires only 30 minutes of daily learning practice. One of my favorite things about the app is how it keeps track of your progress by showing you how many words you've learned. But again, this isn't just memorization by flashcards. You actually have to be able to use the word in real life scenarios to get credit. 
If you've always wanted to speak a foreign language, 2023 is the time to make it happen. And no better way to do it than using Speakly. Try free for 7 days and get a 60% discount if you join the annual subscription. Now back to the maps. As stated before, the group likely somehow acquired Portuguese marine charts. This was who Vespucci was employed by after the Spanish. Among them are believed to be this 1506 map by Nicolai de Caveri and a 1502 world map by Alberto Cantino, both of which show parts of North and South America's eastern coastline. When introduction to cosmography first started popping back up, those who studied it noticed an interesting paragraph on the back of a fold-out diagram. The first sentences read, The purpose of this little book is to write a sort of introduction to the whole world that we have depicted on a globe and on a flat surface. The globe, certainly, I have limited in size, but the map is larger. Clearly, there should have been a map and a globe with the book, but they were nowhere to be found. But the authors gave some hints as to what the map looked like. When describing the map, the authors wrote, As farmers usually mark off and divide their farms by boundaries, so it has been our endeavor to make the chief countries of the world by the emblems of their rulers. And, to begin with our own continent, in the middle of Europe, we have placed the eagles of the Holy Roman Empire, which rule the kings of Europe. And with the key, which is the symbol of the Holy Father, we have enclosed almost the whole of Europe, which acknowledges the Roman Church. The great part of Africa and part of Asia we have distinguished by crescents, which are the emblems of the supreme sultan of Babylonia, the lord of Egypt and part of Asia. The part of Asia, called Asia Minor, we have surrounded with a saffron-colored cross joined to a branding iron, which is the symbol of the Sultan of the Turks, who rules Scythia on this side of the Emmaus, the highest of the mountains of Asia and Sarmatian Scythia. Asiatic Scythia we have marked by anchors, which are the emblems of the great Tartar Khan. A red cross symbolizes Prester John, who rules both eastern and southern India, and who resides in Bibirith. And finally, on the fourth part of the world, discovered by the kings of Castile and Portugal, we have placed the emblems of those sovereigns. What is not to be ignored is that we have marked with crosses shallow places in the sea where shipwreck may be feared. With this, we end. The authors also mentioned they had studied the books of Ptolemy, which was used for the geography of the old world and modern sailors for the new. He made another reference to the size, stating that the map was in sheets, another indicator that the map was large. But the boldest statement of all came after the paragraph where he named America. He stated that this fourth part of the world is found to be surrounded on all sides by the ocean. At the time of the writing, no European was recorded as having seen the Pacific Ocean. That wasn't until 1513, when Vasco Nunez de Balboa crossed the Isthmus of Panama. As Columbus's 400th anniversary of contact with the New World reached closer, the map drew more attention. Scholars searched libraries and collections across Europe for just one of the 1,000 copies that were thought to have been produced. In 1897, related maps were found in Germany. Neither was the map, but it was a hint as to what it looked like. A Swiss humanist named Henricus Glarianus had placed two hand-drawn maps inside his copy of Introduction to Cosmography. He wrote on a map, I have depicted it proportionally on a small scale, the three parts of the world and the recently discovered fourth, American land. But there were two maps. One was the world as a whole, but the other was of the Western Hemisphere, which the book had never mentioned. But looking at the shape of the fourth part of the world, it was apparent they were related. And on this map, he also wrote Terra America. This also gave a little bit of insight as to how a seemingly random geographer was able to name the new continent when he held no leadership position or was a discoverer of the land himself. By Waltzemuller's own account, introduction to cosmography was popular and widely distributed. It was also made for educational purposes so many classrooms in Europe saw the map and globe, not just individual owners of the book. And with information not found on other published maps, it was probably tough to argue that this wasn't the most accurate. In 1538, Gerardus Mercator 
who still influences map making today with his famous projection, used America to name both the North and South. This may have been what fixed the New World's name as America permanently. Finally, in 1910, a map was found in the library of the castle of Wolfegg in Germany, tucked away in a book owned by a 16th century German geographer, Johannes Schooner. It was found by a Jesuit historian, Joseph Fischer, who had been searching for the past seven years for maps that showed evidence of early Atlantic exploration of the Norsemen. Everything matched up just as the introduction to cosmography had described it, including its size. Unfolded, it measured at a massive four and a half feet by eight feet. The map was sold to the Library of Congress in 2003 and was officially handed off in a ceremony in 2007 and today is housed in the Thomas Jefferson building. Though there is thought to have been around a thousand copies made, this wall map remains the only copy to have been found. Though there actually have been a handful of globe gores found, but I'll save that for another video. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you to all my Patreon and YouTube members and thank you all for watching.